Josh in Newton, Kansas. You're on the air. Hi there. Hi, Josh. Hi, Josh. Hi, this is crazy. I've actually been watching you guys for a, oh, okay. a long time now. Um, Are you in Kansas? Yes. Okay. Um, here where I live, um, there's actually kind of a... It, it, I guess you would call it kind of like a, a Sunday school kind of thing, but it happens, you know, during the weekday during school, and me and my wife are both atheists, and uh, they have you sign this waiver, and they it allows your kid to kind of go off campus and go to this, uh, I guess you'd say churchy kind of thing, and they do mm. the arts and crafts, and, you know, they have fun and whatnot. Um, that's what the problem I had with, you know, but being an atheist, I, I'd rather not sign it. I'd rather her not go, but at the same time, I would hate to have her... Resent you. The, well, yeah, and, and being the one or two kids who are stuck in the classroom, you know, by themselves, kind of drawing. And two years old. I, I did, it, it kind of sucks that it's so ingrained in, in this society that, that you know, it, it, they are the outcasts. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I mean, you could do something like go to the ACLU about this, but it's like, do you want to be that one parent who who uh, stirs stuff up? But it sounds like what you're saying is it's an extracurricular thing that they're saying that you can opt in or out of. Yeah. And yeah. it's a it's not a public. I'm guessing this isn't a public school because your daughter's only two years old. So this is like a preschool. Well, no, no, no. I'm, I'm, she's not in school yet, but it, it's the school that she would more likely go oh, okay. to. Oh, okay. Does this. Got okay. it. Um, I, I, I mean, I did it, but I think I was like, oh, I don't know, third, fourth grade. But it's, it's, a, it's a weekly thing, and, and I, I knew kids who were just in the classroom and who, you know, they never win, and I just, I never, I never really knew why. And, you know, I, I now kind of do, but it just, it, it, it sucks to think that she would be the, the one sitting in class all by herself while her friends right. go out and have fun and this and that. You know, um, as a parent, you're still the biggest influence in her life, even if she's without, um, I, I mean, even if she's outside the home and spending a lot of time with friends and picking up peer pressure, talking to her directly about stuff actually goes a long way. So the approach that I always took with my son was basically, I mean, I live in Texas, but of course it's a pretty liberal part of Texas. But still, there are a lot of religious people in in Ben's schools. Um, and what I always did was make sure not to hide that stuff. In fact, I mean, I went out of my way to read the Bible to him uh, along with the other fictional stories that I read when he was a little kid. And oh, oh, I can't wait to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. At, at, or, you know, tell it in a silly way, sort of embellish the story. Um, and sure. as he got older, explain to him to the best of my abilities look, you're going to be meeting a lot of people who really believe this stuff and take this seriously, and here's what they think, and here's what we think, and, you know, I'm not telling you what to think. I'm just saying that's the way things are. And I think as you go along, if you give your input and feedback, I mean, maybe she won't have such a great time at those things. Maybe she'll come back and, and say, oh, those people are just talking about God, and it's really boring. And then you say, I agree, and then you look like the good guy. Yeah. Well, um, I just <laughs> yeah, I hate I hate being the one that that has to be the uh, you know the guy to tell her that oh no 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 you you know all your friends are wrong <laughs> you know it, we're right they're wrong you know <laughs> it just it I don't know, it, it's a I guess you'd say touchy subject you well, know, it, it, yeah and, well but if you think about it I mean. Even religious parents are doing that, right? I mean, if I'm no, raising no, no. if I'm raising my kid Christian, I'm basically saying your Hindu friends are wrong, or your you know, Muslim exactly. friends would be wrong, or anybody else that doesn't. Even like even if you're raising a fundamentalist, you're saying your Catholic friends are wrong. I mean, right? And you notice like atheists are the only ones I ever I ever hear who feel like they have this dilemma. Like I don't want to be just telling my kid uh, exactly what to think, and Christians are like they damn well better <laughs> believe what I think. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think a certain amount of that is inevitable when you're parenting because, I mean, you know, explaining <laughs> explaining why you don't run out in the street when a car is coming only goes so far uh, when instead of just saying, get out of the street. <laughs> um, but I, 
I think that atheist parents tend to be pretty thoughtful about this, and and uh, I don't. I think that it's not that hard to actually express what everybody's thinking and give everything a fair shake, um, and still get across what your views are while still being open to the possibility that uh, they could decide differently when they get older, and that's okay. Yeah, I think that's also a, a big point that you know. It, it, it's probably, a, I don't know if it would be easier, but it'd probably be a lot easier to say, well, you know, I'm a, I'm a theist converted to atheism than an atheist converted to theism. Right. Yeah. Especially for a kid, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, guys, and it's awesome calling in. This is my first one. Okay. Okay, thanks, thanks for, for calling. calling. <laughs> Bye. Bye.